Seven prisoners escaped from Siberia, stepping over snow, through forests, across the great desert and over the Himalayas. They were so hungry that they ate worms and even snatched food from wolves, and drank muddy water when they were thirsty. They were so tired that their legs and feet were swollen and even ulcerated. When they were sleepy, they slept on the ground at the foot of the Great Wall. Eventually, they traveled through four countries on foot and finally arrived in India. This film is set during World War II. The Soviet Union imposed a dictatorship on Poland and arrested many Polish officers and government officials. They were convicted of political crimes and sent to labor camps in Siberia. The guards weren't as strict, but even if they had escaped, they would have frowned seen and starved to death in the harsh conditions and cold weather. Hundreds of kilometers of snowy wilderness are the best natural prisons. Here they are unearthed, underclothed and humiliated, with endless manual labor every day. It's an insult to Siberia not to freeze to death in this cold weather. I can already feel the cruelty of the camps. The people here were influenced by the environment and became vicious and cruel and followed the law of the jungle. Six out of seven people were wrongfully imprisoned. Janusz's wife was forced by the Soviets to accuse him of collaborating with foreigners. So he was convicted of espionage. There was a Polish actor who was arrested on the day of the film's release for elevating the status of the old aristocracy. There's an American, a night blind man, a painter, a hairdresser. The last was a real villain named Valka, a simple-minded murderer. Valka didn't stay idle in prison, gambling all day long, robbing people with a knife to pay off his debts when he lost. But he owed too much money to pay back so he had to escape. Next, they started trading goods for food for their fellow inmates and stockpiling it. During the day, they worked to scout out escape routes. They planned to escape from the prison and travel 500 kilometers south to Lake Baikal. Once they crossed the Siberian railway and continued south to the Mongolian border, they would be free on a snowy night. All the preparations for the escape were made. Since the generator stopped working, they soon escaped from the camp through a barbed wire fence. As planned, by now, the blizzard is so heavy that they can no longer see the road ahead. The tracks they made were soon covered with snow. It's a good way to lose their pursuers, but it also hampers their escape. Janish quickly went to work barking the trees with Valka's dagger, and then made each of them a protective mask. This way they could run a lot faster, at least without the pain of the drifting snow cutting into their faces like knives. When dawn came, they rested a bit and rounded up the food they had stocked up. Eating the right amount of food every day will help keep them going for longer. Next, Janish uses a tree branch and a pine cone to determine the right direction to go. He earned Valka's respect for his wilderness survival skills. Velka also calls Janusz his boss. It was a particularly cold night when they all went out to collect firewood. The night blind man, carrying dry wood, was groping around in the forest and couldn't find his way back. They searched in vain for him. Tragically, the night blind man was found the next day a few meters from the rest of the group, already frowning. The six men built a grave for him with stones. After the funeral, they carried on with their grief. Ever since they ran out of food, they have been eating bugs, stealing birds' eggs, fighting wolves for food, and then gathering together to just gobble it all up. In spite of all this, they were short of food and could only replenish it if they reached Lake Baikal. But they didn't realize how far away it was. The next day Janusz packed his bags and looked at his weakened companions and decided to explore the area alone. While the other five waited on the spot, if it didn't return within seven days, they would all run for their lives. Janusz's expedition had been a long and arduous one, and he had to eat the bark of a tree to survive, before he finally found Lake Baikal. As everyone expected, Janusz came back trembling and told the other five the news. From here, they could reach Baikal in three days. The six men on crutches saw Baikal from the mountain as if they had seen hope. At that moment, one of them had the feeling that someone was following them. They were about to swarm over them when they found a small, weak girl named Irena. She was also a Pole who had escaped from a concentration camp and wanted to join their escape party. The six men discussed the situation and rejected her on the grounds that there was a shortage of food. Passing by Lake Baikal, they accidentally found a wild deer stuck in a mud puddle. They rounded it up and killed it, then carried it back to the campsite and roasted it over a fire. The hairdresser brought Irina along. She didn't give up and stayed behind the group. Now that they have enough food, they don't want her to join them. The next day, well fed and refreshed, they began to clean up after themselves. Some hung out their clothes, others shaved. Those who didn't know would have thought they were on holiday. They finished cleaning up and went to the lake. This is the Soviet border. As the lake is covered in a thin layer of ice, they are about to take off their shoes and swim to the other side. Irena is the first to put her shoes on and step out onto the ice. Six of them followed. One of them fell into the water and made the others laugh. They crossed the road and saw a village across the road. Some of them wanted to get something to eat. But if they're found out and reported, they'll be put in a dark camp again. So they give up. At night they realized that Valka had disappeared and they were furious. At that moment, 
Valka slipped out of the darkness, and brought back a dog and a bottle of wine, which allayed their fears. For the first time in their escapes, they ate meat and wine. It was a very warm atmosphere. By night, they reached the border between the Soviet Union and Mongolia. But Valka stopped. He didn't want to leave his country, the Soviet Union. He escaped only to get out of a gambling debt. He owed to his fellow inmates, so he said goodbye to his mates and left alone. The rest of the group crosses the Mongolian border, and then the unexpected happens. As soon as they reached the Gopi Desert, they were surrounded by Mongols on horseback. Faced with the Mongols, the American was the first to calmly explain that they were on a pilgrimage to Tibet and were passing through. That's how they got away. But the biggest threat to them is not humans. It's the almost barren wasteland. The sun is testing their fortitude all the time. The sun can be avoided by setting up a tent, but they have another problem that they can't solve. The lack of water. Exhausted, the six people look at a place in the distance that some say is a mirage, but the American says is a forest. They could only go on with their illusions. Then a bird crossed the sky and gave them hope. For where there is a bird, there must be water. For getting their tired bodies, they ran as fast as they could in a 100 meter sprint. Although there was no dense forest here, luckily there was a well. They drank frantically from the well and washed the sand off their bodies. Then they filled all the containers with water. When they were ready, the six of them continued on their way. They didn't know how long they'd been traveling, but when they saw the yellow sand rising, they started to run for cover. The water they had prepared was almost gone in a flash. It was suggested that they should go back and fill their tanks, but there are no signs in the wilderness, so it's almost impossible to go back the way they came. So they have to keep going. Soon Irena couldn't take it anymore. She fainted in the desert and her legs swelled up like gourds. When she woke up again, she had gone far and collapsed. Irena stopped breathing due to heat stroke. A pile of sandy graves in the desert is a sad sight, but the harsh conditions didn't allow them to stay too long. So they had to keep moving. It wasn't long before the unforgiving desert took the painter's life. The group of five had now become a group of four. The remaining four were in a particularly bad mood due to both the psychological and physical shock. By this time, they had already crossed the desert. Yanish woke up the next day to find a snake crawling over him. He followed the snake and found some muddy water. They swarmed on the ground and drank it. The next thing they did was to roast the snake and eat it, and then they had the strength to move on. They find the river and rejuvenate themselves. Then the four of them enter China and saw the Great Wall, but they didn't stop there. They continued up the snowy mountains to Lhasa. They were warmly invited by the locals. The first time this American enjoyed the hospitality, he didn't want to leave. He wanted to stay in China to look for American soldiers fighting against the Japanese. The remaining three men continued their journey over the Himalayas and finally reached India. Years later, Yanish returned home to his wife, who had confessed and waited for him for 50 years. Both of them were now gray-haired. May excellent movies be watched by more people. You can subscribe to Chili Film and leave comments.